I'm going to tell you about the team battle mode in the fighting game Fantasy Strike. But this isn't really about Fantasy Strike. This is about a concept that could be applied to any competitive game where you pick characters. It's a way of playing that might sound strange at first, but it has a lot of fun factor, and it solves a serious problem that competitive fighting games have tended to have for a long time, and it solves it in an interesting way. The concept of a team battle in a fighting game is not new. There are a ton of fighting games that have a mode that's called that. But the specific way it works in Fantasy Strike is not something that I've seen anywhere else. And the properties that you get from doing it this specific way are pretty cool. So I'm going to tell you how it works, but you have to promise to stick with me and hear the explanation for all this too. So here's how it works. I pick three characters and you pick three characters and we're going to play a series of games. So for game one, the computer selects one of my characters and selects one of your characters and then that's the matchup that we play. And then whoever wins, uh, let's say you win. Your character gets a crown and moves to the top of the screen while mine gets X'd out and moves to the bottom. Then we each have two characters left. So the computer then selects one of your two characters and one of my two characters. And that's the matchup that we play for game two. Again, the winning character gets a crown. The loser gets X'd out. After that, we each only have one character left. So that's the matchup we play. And winner gets a crown. Uh, loser gets X'd out. Now, at this point, maybe one of us won all three games. If that's true, then it's over. That's the win condition is you have to get three crowns, meaning you have to win with each of your three different characters. The other possibility is that neither one of us won all three games. So in that case, the X'd out characters on either of our lists get resurrected, and then we continue playing matchups until someone has three crowns. Think of it like this. In Tetris, for example, there's seven pieces, but you can't get like five T's in a row. Uh, that's not how it works. You get a random different piece from the list of seven until you've exhausted the whole list and then it resets. And it works like that here too. You get a random different character each time without repeats until you've gone through the whole list. And that's really important. Uh, if it didn't work like that, then it would be possible to lose the whole set without you playing your best character. But as it stands, the way the rules really are, if there's one character who you're the best at, maybe you're the best in the world of that character, you will definitely get to play that character in that set always. And there's no bans either. Th that would be awful if someone could ban a character of yours and then you wouldn't be able to play it and show off how great you are. You will always play all three of your characters in a set. So that's pretty much how it works. You play three different characters. You have to win with each of the three and there's no repeats in characters until you go through the whole list. So what's so good about all this? Well, I want to look at it from a competitive hardcore point of view and also from a more casual angle. But before I do that, no matter how hardcore or how casual you are, there's something I think is worth mentioning here about how good the flow is, how good the logistics are. So you pick three characters and then we play the entire set of three out of five games without you making any more decisions except for the all important gameplay decisions. We don't stop at any point and ask you about changing characters or ask them about changing characters or wait around for any of that. It's just game after game after game that you roll through and it flows really nice and it feels really nice. So about the hardcore competitive angle, the problem that this is addressing, it has to do with counterpicks. Imagine a fighting game that's really well balanced. Let's say it has mostly even 5-5 five, five matchups. It has some 6-4 matchups. It has just a few 7-3 matchups. Even in a game like that, that's really well balanced compared to most other fighting games, competitive play is going to come down to just a few of the most unfair matchups being the most important and most commonly played ones. So why is that? Well, usually these games are played with a counterpick system. So what that means is that for game one, you and I each pick a character at the same time in a double blind fashion. So we don't know which character the other one is picking. But then after that, if one of us wins, let's say I win, then you can switch characters to anyone that you like. So you're going to switch to the character that has the strongest matchup against my character, the most unfair matchup that you can find. And then if you win, I'm probably going to do the same. I'm going to switch my character to the character that has the most unfair matchup against yours. And at the end of the day, we can end up playing over half of our matchups just as this small set of the most unfair ones. And that's really not fun to watch and it's not fun to play. It sucks. 
And it's been a frustration in fighting games for a long time. I'm going to say the same thing in a different way to help you have some intuition for it. So let's say that Rook in Fantasy Strike, and I'll just make up numbers. This is not a real claim about balance. Let's imagine that Rook had all even 5-5 matchups against every character in the game except one. Let's say that Lum beats Rook really hard. So is Rook a good character to play competitively then? So at first glance, yes, he is a really good character to play. It's really valuable to have even match, so many even matchups and just one problem matchup. Maybe you could practice that difficult matchup and get good at it or just just kind of skate by. But if you actually did this in a real competitive setting, what you would find is that you would not just occasionally face Lum. You're going to face Lum all the time. As soon as anyone sees that you're playing Rook or knows ahead of time that you play Rook, they are going to switch to Lum and just only give you Lum. And it's going to be miserable. You're going to have to fight Lums constantly, not just a few. You're going to fight an army of Lums all the time. It's going to be all about only the one worst matchup. Even if there's, let's say, 12 characters in the game, and this is just one out of 12 matchups. It's going to be the main thing that you face. Now, the same system in the team battle system that Fantasy Strike uses would look nothing like that. So the first thing here is that you might have Lum on your team and I might have Rook on my team, but that matchup might not ever come up. So then you put Lum there for nothing. But even more than that, let's consider the upside to you. So the the best that you could possibly do. The matchup does come up and then you win it. Well, great. That means your Lum gets a crown, but we still That's keep playing. We have to play That's all the other win. matchups of the set. So you don't win the whole thing. But in the normal counterpick system, you could just keep winning with that Lum and, you know, ride the whole set off that. So your upside is much smaller here. But an even bigger force is your downside. You have a huge amount of downside for this kind of maneuver. If you're using Lum just as a counterpick, you might have a fraudulent Lum. What I mean is uh, you don't really play Lum. You don't know him in and out. You don't know all the matchups. You just kind of have him in your pocket in case anyone plays Rook. And that's a very common thing in fighting games. So if that's what you're doing, if you're putting a fraudulent Lum on your team, that's extremely dangerous because remember that you have to actually win with Lum. I might end up getting all three of my crowns just by beating your Lum repeatedly with all my different characters. So you generally don't want to put a character that you're not great on on your team in the system. It's just not strategically smart to do. So what is strategically smart to do? Is it that you should look at matchup charts and consider, you know, the complexities of the metagame and so on? Not really. In this kind of system, the thing that you're best off doing is just picking the three characters you're best at. And it's honestly such a relief because that's the simple thing that you want to do anyway. And it turns out to be the strategically good thing to do here, too. It's also a relief that you get to play so many different matchups, most of which are actually fair matchups instead of the alternative where everything is focused on just a small set of the most unfair matchups. I think spectators really benefit from the system too. They get to see a whole bunch of different matchups and it's just more fun to watch. And back to the casual point of view, even though this mode was developed with the most hardcore tournament players in mind, it really turned out to be the most fun casual mode as well. You just get matchup after matchup and things keep changing. And sometimes there's a matchup that you can't quite figure out, but that's okay because there's going to be another matchup right after that. And it's kind of funny that the mode that works best for players who are new or not that deep into the game is also the one that works the best for the super hardcore tournament players. So that's it. You can try out this team battle mode in Fantasy Strike. It's free to play, so go ahead and download it. And please buy the core pack to support us. Enjoy the mode, and maybe we'll see it copied in other games someday. That would be awesome.